What's up, nation? We are at Pandot Driver's License Center right now because we have to get our address changed uh, because of insurance reasons. Um, and I got a call from the car dealership, my salesman, yesterday, and he said that he didn't want my temporary tag to expire. So um, we got to uh, change that over. I got this lady looking at me right here. Hi. Warning. So uh, yeah, never just say hi to people when 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 they when they're looking at you crazy when you're vlogging with the camera pointed to yourself in the car talking to yourself. All right, guys, uh, let's go inside the driver's license center and handle this business, guys. But first, let me give you guys a walk around of the Jeep. Got a whole lot to show you today. Make sure you subscribe. Got a whole lot to show you. So stay tuned in. Make sure you hit that bell too. Welcome to the show. Thank you. Here's a side profile of the Jeep, guys. Side profile of the Jeep right there. And we're moving around to the front. As you can see, it's a very gloomy and rainy day. Moving around to the front right there. You got the LED lights, LED headlights right there. Really, really dope. This thing feels like a tank, I have to tell you guys. It really feels like you're driving a tank. Here's the other profile right there. I can't wait till the summertime so I can snatch the doors off and take the top off. It's raining out here, drizzling, but it is a great, fabulous, wonderful day. Despite that, got the Jeep tile on the back with my temporary tag right there. And we got the big pen dot sign right here, so I can't go around any further. But yeah, that's pretty much the gist of what the outside looks like, guys. I'm gonna show you guys inside later on in the vlog. But um, yeah guys, and one more quick walk around and then we'll go into the driver's licensing center. I love this thing guys. What do you guys think in the comment section down below? What do you guys think about the Jeep? I've been waiting for a, I've been waiting for a nice day so I can put the decals on, but it doesn't look like we're gonna get a nice day. So uh, yeah. Got the step rails on there. I love it, it's, it's my style. I'm really, really confident that I won't be able to vlog in here, guys, so I'll see you guys when I get out, but we'll just get me going in and that's it. So Dub Nation, this is the deal. I had to go home real fast because I needed uh, my passport. So Pennsylvania has this thing where for the longest we've had fake driver's license, fake IDs. Well, I won't say they're fake IDs, but they're not real IDs. It's weird. Um, <laughs> anyway, they got this thing called real IDs. And in order to, I don't know, I can't explain it, but I just needed my passport. I had everything that I needed to change my address on my driver's license. I had all the right documents, but the guy suggested that in April, I'll have to renew my, my, my license. So rather than to pay $30 now to change the address, and in a couple months, in April on my birthday, when my driver's license expires, pay another $30 and have to bring my passport um, to get the, you know, to renewal, because you need your passport for renewal. Just, um, just get my passport now and pay the $30 and renew as well as change the address at the same time. Makes 100% sense. So that's what I'm gonna do. Headed back home. Luckily, I'm not that far away from the driver's licensing center and gonna grab my passport real fast, which I should have had with me. Always, as a just in case, when you're going to places like the DMV and stuff like that, always have that stuff with you because it's just like, you know, they need stuff like that. Like, I don't know, social security cards or, not social security cards, more like birth certificates and driver, and um, uh, you know, passports and stuff like that. Mainly your passport, for real, for real, so, I don't know. We have our passport, passport, passport.
That exhaust sounds so weak starting up. <laughs> it's so soft. All right, guys, quick look at the inside of the Jeep. There's a door panel right there. You got your lock, unlock buttons right here. You got your adjust the mirrors left and right. Um, this feature was different between this Jeep and the other Jeeps. This is more like a car, whereas though you open and it locks, kind of stays. From other Jeeps, it like just swings. It's free swinging. But I can still take off the doors. You just take off that piece right there and unhook a harness and the doors can still come off. We got our light adjusters right there to adjust the headlamps and adjust the interior and stuff like that. And got our signal control lever right here. Turn signals. Got the controls on the steering wheels. Boom. Got the, uh, oh, look at this. Got the rockers on the back of the steering wheels to control the up the radio channel selectors. Got this to navigate the menus and the dash. Hands free. The Jeep logo. Got the cruise control. Got the rocker in the back of the steering wheel to operate the volume. Of course, we got our windshield wiper controls right here, right there. All right. And this is a look at our cockpit, our instrument cluster right here. We got 120 on the dash. Oh, killing it. Full tank of gas. We can go anywhere we want to right now. Looking good. Just navigate a little bit. Got the music, got everything like that. So, moving right along, we got the small screen. We got the small screen that will be changed soon, guys. That will be changed. So hold your horses. This whole bezel is coming off and we're replacing it with a huge, huge touch screen. So stay tuned for that. That's one of the first mods I'm going to do. Um, minus the antenna. The antenna is coming off. I'm getting a short antenna. So stay tuned for that. Got the heated seats, heated seats, heated steering wheel right here. Make sure that's focused. Heated seats. Fully adjustable heated steering wheel. Got the uh, climate control. Got the control that. Got the passenger heated seats. You know, got the hazards. Got the, uh, this right here controls whether the car cuts, turns on or off when you're at a stop sign. I mean, when you when you come to a complete stop, the eco mode, I guess. Um, we got the off-road, uh, the, the swerve thingy thing thing. You guys can tell me what that is in the comment section, you Jeep heads. And we got our descent um, control, I guess. Control for traction when you're going down a hill or something like that. Looks like a cruise control. I don't know. That's a cruise control icon, but I don't know what that is exactly. And we got um, more climate control stuff. Turn that off. Oh, yeah. Hill, hill descent control. Unavailable, it says. All right, that's cool. So we got controls for our windows, our power windows, because we do have power windows in this Jeep. Like I said, we got the harness for all four windows, the back and everything. We got a gate uh, thing for your uh, charging, 12 volt charger right here. And we have our media port right here where we can have our auxiliary, USB type C, standard USB. We got a little bit of storage right here, a little bit of storage. All right, and then we have our four-wheel drive stuff right here. We have the two-wheel low, four-wheel high, neutral, and four-wheel low. Then we have our gauges right here where we control the transmission. I purchased the one with the um, eight-speed uh, eight automatic transmission. Um, awesome uh, V6 in here. We, of course, we have our parking brake right here little small little area right here uh, got the garage door opener but we do have a garage programmable garage thing right here so that manual garage door opener won't be needed anymore so we'll just use we'll just program the garage door up here because we have that so um, this is pretty much this is nice spec that's why I didn't lose too much when I went with this and in Jeeps guys in Jeeps you must know this there is absolutely no glove compartment space not no glove compartment space but very very minimal glove compartment space in a jeep got these net 
nets on the side here and there's a passenger side door and in the armrest armrests are very very minimal also go on the armrest got some change right there very small right here just the top part very small i got very minimal stuff here um and then the big part oh yeah i had spilled water on that seat right there so i had when chanel was sitting down i had to put the plastic bag down so it's pretty deep i have one usb plug right here and i got a bunch of gadgets down there a bunch of gopros and suction cups and stuff like that and that's it for the front we'll look at the back a little, in a little while got our seat belts of course stuff like that when you see the roof fully removable roof and yeah we'll look at some more of it um later on and of course over here we have our light up thing so we can see ourselves that's pretty cool passenger side has one too um which is pretty cool and we have our levers to take off the top right here and right here yeah fully removable tops levers right here boom take the top off right there yep so yeah we'll uh we'll sh i'll show you guys some more later on but we're gonna go over to the driver's license in place and handle this business let's go it's so gloomy and dark outside but it's still such a wonderful day <laughs> It really is though, it's a, it's a great day. Despite the fact that it's raining, it's dark and dank and gloomy out, I still love this day. It's a great day today. really love about the Jeep guys and I can't stop emphasizing this is that you really feel like you're driving a tank like you feel that you spent your money on something like it's it's not that fast it's not for everybody I could that's the only way I can put it like this is this Jeep driving is not for everybody it's a different type of feel than a regular car it's a different type of feel than a traditional SUV um, like my mom's RAV4 is weak right but this is weak as far as like horsepower and stuff like that is concerned but it still feels strong like really really strong it's it's a weird like in between feeling it feels like it feels like if i got in a collision with another car like i would be fine like it really feels like solid it feels heavy it feels like you bought a lot of beef for your money i don't know i can't explain it but that's how it feels driving a Jeep. So, yeah, it's not for everybody. I personally love it. I understand why Jeep owners like continue, continuously stay loyal to, to the brand, to the Jeep brand, because it just feels secure. It's a different type of drive. And with the updates that they did, um, I don't feel like I'm missing out on too much technology wise. So it's pretty cool. Um, I like it so far and um, it serves the purpose of the reason why I got it. Like, you know, I'm gonna send this to the islands once it's paid for, and we're gonna cruise around in the islands in a pretty much brand new Jeep um, once it's shipped out there in maybe a year, two, three, you know what I mean? And we'll grab a supercar for the States. Yes, I said it, supercar. Supercar is in the future of ADAP Productions. All right, so um, make sure you guys like comment subscribe and stay tuned watch all the um ads and go visit the merch store let's let's handle our business guys i'll talk to you guys in a second now serving i zero two zero and counter nine all right guys so i finished my um application now process serving. at one F area and now eight, i'm gonna go take my six, new picture i hope one, it comes out good but um, I didn't get to shake myself up, which is um, horrible. I should have did that really fast, but it's okay. Um, I think we're good enough. You know, hopefully we take a good picture. I gotta live with this picture for five years, so let's do the best we can to take a good picture. Okay. All right, guys. I am finished adulting for the day. 
I've handled all my adult business that I need to handle. I took care of my um, driver's license, took care of my brand new Jeep registration inspection stickers and everything. Called the dealership, told them I took care of that and I guess the guy's gonna call me back. My dealer's gonna call me back and let me know if he needs anything else. So everything is pretty much taken care of as far as that's concerned. Now I have time to do stuff that I want to do. Now guys, I'm going to tell you guys something about Pennsylvania, right? Total ripoff. I'm going to do a separate video on this all together, but I just want to give you guys a recap of what transpired today. So, I told you guys about the real ID thing. And the ID that I have right now is not a quote-unquote real ID. I was told that a real ID would be a separate $30. Now, I paid $118 to get my driver's license address changed as well as to renew the driver's license, right? Um, but the driver's license that I have is not a quote unquote real ID or whatever they call it in Pennsylvania because Pennsylvania's identification is not considered to be real ID. Like you can't get into government buildings and you can't use it to travel um, domestically um, using that ID. I'm sorry, I'm driving right now. So, um, I called the lady, I called PennDOT, and I spoke with some lady, and she told me that, um, yeah, that they, the ID that I have is not a quote-unquote real ID. So I asked her, like, why, would, why did I pay $118 to get a fake ID? And she's like, it's not fake, it's just not what's considered to be a real ID. I'm like, well, if it's not considered to be a real ID, I don't understand why the state of Pennsylvania is giving out something that's not any real ID. It makes no sense whatsoever, but I thought about it and it finally figured out what's going on here. What's going on is the state of Pennsylvania is robbing us. Um, if you live in Pennsylvania, we're getting robbed basically. Because if you have some, if your, your state is, has something that's considered to be fake, and um, you have a certain timeline to get everybody to have real ID or I don't know what t type of stipulations they have with that. After you're aware of that as a state in the United States of America, why would you give people anything less than a real ID? You know why? Because you're greedy and you want to make money. So they have two separate forms of ID that you can get. I mean, I guess a real ID and a fake ID, but it's two separate ones. So you pay $30 to renew your driver's license from the state of Pennsylvania and you get a driver's license card that's not a real ID. It makes the, the whole the whole thing makes no sense whatsoever. It's like if I'm not getting a real ID, well what the hell am I getting? Like, you know what I mean? And they and I had the lady on the phone and I asked her, I said, well, this, if, the, if the other one that I didn't get is called a real ID, then that means that this one that I did get is called what? And she had no answer for me. It's just ridiculous. It's just ridiculous. And it's irritating and it's, uh, it's the trickery and the robbery. These, the, the system is just, oh my gosh. It's, just, it, it is, it's the system. It's set up, it's set up messed up. It's just messed up how they just penny pinching, robbed from the citizens and like, all right. Turn up that, crank it up. Why listen to the rest when you're rocking with the best, baby? Like, 